Hey, this is Dom from MacMixing.com, and today we're going to go over Melodyne. Uh, it's a popular vocal editing tool from Salamone, and uh, we're going to go ahead and go over the ins and outs for using it with Pro Tools. Um, I'm using Pro Tools 9, but it'll work uh, with uh, versions uh, 7 and 8, I believe. Um, so we'll go ahead and uh, get started here. Uh, right here, selected. We have uh, just the first part of a verse. It's uh, actually from a song called Stare at the Sun. It's a cover song by a band called Thrice. And we're going to go ahead and uh, tune that part of the vocal track. I'm going to go ahead and play it for you in its raw form so you can hear uh, its natural state. I sit here clutching useless lists, keys for doors that don't exist. I crack. My teeth on pearls. All right, so you know, it's okay. Um, it's not exactly perfect. There are things that are sharp and flat about it, um, but we're gonna go ahead and take care of all that with our little miracle vocal editing tool, Melodyne. Uh, if you go ahead and click on uh, first insert here, um, we can go ahead and select Melodyne Bridge. Mine's located in the other section and it'll pop open this little box. Uh, you definitely want to make sure that you put it as the first insert in the chain um, because Melodyne is actually going to record uh, anything before that, before itself. So, you know, if you have some effects or some reverb going on before that, it's actually going to record that into Melodyne with it um, and then patch it back into Pro Tools. Uh, but you won't get a, a realistic reading uh, inside of Melodyne. Um, so you want to just make sure it's first. Uh, once we have this box open here, Melodyne will actually open up for you. If it doesn't open up for you, uh, then go ahead and just open it up yourself and create a new arrangement. But usually it'll open up with a new arrangement already set up. You'll be in the arrangement window here. We're going to go ahead and go back into Pro Tools and we want to connect to a track. These track numbers correspond to uh, Melodyne and actually you can double click on the tracks and name them so I'm gonna put verse for this one when I go back in Pro Tools it'll actually show that name track so you can keep it pretty organized so I'm gonna go ahead and select verse and click the transfer button and that's gonna arm Melodyne to send audio it says right here going to send audio and then I'm just gonna press play I sit here clutching useless lists, keys for doors that don't exist. I crack my teeth on pearls. All right, so we've now transferred that into Melodyne. Sometimes you'll see a little dialog box pop up here that says that it's detecting the audio. That didn't happen right now because it's a short enough segment that it could do it pretty quick. And uh, once you're in Melodyne here, uh, on your first track, you'll see all these orange blobs, and this is actually your vocal waves. Um, you know, they look pretty similar in, in form, but they're now sorted out by note, or by where Melodyne believes that the note is. And it's pretty good on detecting stuff like this. So, uh, now that we have that in here, we can start the actual uh, editing and tuning of the vocal. Up here in the top left, you're going to have this little toolbar. Uh, there's six buttons here that you'll be able to select from to do your editing. Um, now, keep in mind, though, once you have your vocals in here, um, this vocal right here in Pro Tools on your Pro Tools track means absolutely nothing. Um, I can actually just, I could take that away, and I'd still have vocal play. I sit here clutching useless lists. So even though nothing is there, it's actually being patched in from Melodyne now. Uh, it's being bridged in. So um, that really doesn't mean anything anymore. I just leave them there for reference, so it makes it a lot easier to be able to tell what you're editing uh, and what you're listening to inside of Pro Tools. Now back in uh, Melodyne, uh, we're going to go ahead and click on the Edit Pitch button up here in the top left. It's the second button, or if you right-click on your right-click menu, it's your second button. Just leave it on the first button, don't worry about the two underneath it that pop up, and release, and you're going to have uh, 
your orange blobs here, but behind them, behind the waveforms, you're actually going to see gray uh, shadowed boxes. It's actually letting you know that it's not dead on and that it, it's suggesting that you uh, shift it to that area. Do this note by note by just clicking, double clicking each one, and it'll send it to its rightful spot in the melodic universe. Or you can just go ahead and select all by clicking and dragging, and you can double click them all at once. That's going to just send everything right to where it should be. Um, so now we'll go ahead and just play this back after I've shifted everything. I sit here clutching useless lists, keys for doors that don't exist. I crack my teeth on pearls. Easy enough. It already improved some of the things that I found wrong with it, but there are little things here and there that I'd like to tighten up. Um, the best way to tighten up some of these vocal tracks is to edit the modulation. Now, either up on this top bar or on your right-click menu, uh, at the top, if you click and hold, you'll see the two buttons pop up. Or if you right-click, uh, they'll automatically pop up uh, underneath the Edit Pitch button. And you can just go down to Edit Pitch Modulation, or sorry, just Pitch Modulation and Release. And that'll bring up the little, it'll have a little squiggly line with two arrows on the side. Uh, from here, we can actually tighten up the modulation of said vocal track. Uh, if you just click on any given uh, wave form and pull down or up, you can see uh, your little heart rate looking lines, which is the modulation. You can see that tightening up here. Um, or if you're me, and you just like to have an all-around type vocal track, you can go ahead and do that to the whole thing. I usually pull in everything uh, just a little bit, you know, just uh, just a little bit. And it'll tell you at the top, in the top left corner, see as I'm dragging down, you see the percentage is telling me how much percent I'm pulling it in. So usually pull it down to about there and get it nice and tight. And, uh, and then you can go ahead and fine-tune each note um, depending on you know where it's sharp and where it's flat this note right here pearls uh, it's kind of a little shaky here I know it's not supposed to have vibrato in it and I usually leave the vibrato notes alone um, because it does mess with uh, with how it, it sounds in the final product but this one I know it's supposed to be uh, straight on so I just want to tighten that up a lot actually a lot more than I did the rest of them. And if you listen to that now, pearls. it gives it a little more of an artificial sound. That was actually a little too much. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and bring it out a little bit. Pearls. See, now that is kind of where I wanted it to be. Um, now, some of these notes, some, some of them you'll see, uh, like the modulation line is way far above the actual wave. Um, that's actually most most of the time indicating that there's two notes within that waveform. And what you want to do is go down to these little mountain icons down here. And uh, your big mountain is zoom in. And you have uh, your horizontal and your vertical zoom. You can zoom in like that. And then bring it in a little closer. And what's handy too is down at the bottom on the bar right here, you'll see... Uh, you can actually see where the waveforms are at, so you can kind of just move to where you need it to be. Now, right here, I know that I know right here there is two notes in there. Um, I mean, most of the time you can just tell by listening to it. Useless, useless, useless. Okay, so what we're gonna do is go back to our menu here and go down to note separation. Uh, at the bottom is segment separation. We're not worrying about that right now. We want to go to note separation, and uh, here that'll pull up your segments. And within this segment, I want to find where the end of that, where the end of that slant uh, meets the the new part. And I just want to double click here, and that's actually going to separate it. And here it realized that there was two notes in there, didn't pick it up 100% correctly. So we're going to go ahead and back, go back to edit pitch. And then we're going to have to reshift these notes back into place. By doing that, we clearly define those notes in audio playback. 
watching useless lists. It makes it sound a little more consistent. Um, and go ahead and do that wherever you see fit. Um, some places more than others, you know. Sometimes you'll find out that even doing it on certain notes where it's not 100% necessary, it does define the vocal pattern a little better. Don't exist, I crack. So, we're going to go ahead and do it right here again. You'll start seeing uh, your waveforms look a little more how they sound. Exist, I crack my teeth on pearls. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and zoom out now. Click on your little mountains, the little mountains, a couple times. Back to where we can see everything. Um, so here is a pretty, pretty sturdy edited vocal track. Um, change the modulation a little bit on some of these places where I know that needs to be just more of a solid note. And uh, there we go. So we'll go ahead and listen to the final product now. And uh, it's just a light tuning and editing job. Uh, there are plenty of other tools up here that we'll go into further detail in different tutorials. But for now, here's our final product. I sit here clutching useless lists Keys for doors that don't exist I crack my teeth on pearls That sounds that sounds terrific now. Um, so I'll go ahead and A-B it for you. Here's uh, the untuned. I sit here clutching useless lists Keys for doors that don't exist I crack my teeth on pearls and here's our tuned I sit here clutching useless lists keys for doors that don't exist I crack my teeth on pearls sounds tremendously better and you'll get the best out of every vocal take uh, that you record just by using those simple steps in Melodyne uh, it makes a world of difference in a vocal track. Uh, so we'll go into further detail in some of the other options you can do in Melodyne, such as uh, automatically making harmonies. Uh, well, not automatic, but you can make some pretty realistic sounding harmonies in Melodyne without having the vocalist record the actual harmony. And it works a lot better than Harmony Engine, in my opinion. Now, Harmony Engine uh, from Andres does have its place in the vocal editing world, but I just, for, for more of a natural sound, I prefer uh, to do harmonies in Melodyne. Um, or, uh, I mean, obviously, if the artist can do it properly, just have the artist do it and edit them in Melodyne. But we'll go over that next time. Uh, once again, this is Dom from MacMixing.com, and I hope this was helpful.